Hi, my name is Steven and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about Life Lessons Learned, Part 5, Tips on Making Friends for Life. So these episodes are about the lessons I've learned throughout my life. This series will look at different aspects of my life now that I'm looking back older and wiser and think about what I could have done better and how I would handle things more differently now that I have more experience under my belt. The goal for others is to learn and skip over my mistakes in my life. So in the last 20 years or so, I've had the pleasure and disappointment of meeting a lot of people within my life. Some people became instant lifelong friends and others were like dust in the wind. They didn't really have an impact on my overall life. When you leave college, the opportunity for making friends takes a huge hit. People become more busy with life and it becomes harder and harder to make new friends as you age. Worse yet, if you don't spend time with your existing friends, you might lose friendships along the way. You might lose friendships as you age or when circumstances change in your life. Finding people that are good and keeping them over a long time can be a significant amount of work. And both sides have to put in the effort and maintain that friendship as you age. So here are some of my lessons learned on forming lifelong friendships. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about my background, my lessons learned, and my general thoughts on friendships. And before we start, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, share with your friends, hit that notification bell if you like this content. And here we go. Lifelong friendships are something that's been on my mind for a very long time, and I wanted to make a video talking about this directly. As we age, we tend to lose friendships along the way due to various life circumstances. Whether that is through a move, disagreements, or different life goals, it's always affected me very deeply when I lose a friend. It's a great loss to me, and it feels like I failed at it. I always thought to myself that if I tried harder and reached out more, then I would be able to keep that friendship alive. But the truth is, some friendships just have a natural expiration date. No amount of work from both parties can save it if it naturally ran its course. With each friendship that I've lost, I've gained more insight about what makes good friendships last longer. And what were the warning signs of potentially failing friendships as they occur. And I've also learned that those who stuck around with me during the pandemic are my closest and truest friends of them all. I think because it was an extraordinarily difficult times and we tend to retreat to those who are closest to us. And now close to the other side of the pandemic, those who have stuck with me during the pandemic, I think will be a lifelong friend for me. And one of the reasons is because both parties tend to put in a lot of effort and time into the relationship to foster it during those hard two years. So here are my lessons learned on making lifelong friends. Number one, understanding your situation. Starting off, you need to assess whether or not you even have the time to commit to other people. Because being someone's friend takes a lot of time and energy and you have to both be invested to it to cultivate that lifelong friendship. So it really means that you have to assess whether or not you're personally committed to that friendship and whether or not you need a break. This means that if you're going through a difficult time or need space from other people, you have to let the other person know that you're unavailable at the moment. Because at the end of the day, we have to take care of ourselves first before we take care of other people or else we're no good to others. This also applies if your life is too chaotic or busy for friends at the moment. Just get in touch with your friends and let them know that you're going to be unavailable for a month or as long as you need. The key is to know where you are in life and let others know if you're available or not. Because at the root of it is lack of communication with other people. When people are busy or not in the mood, they tend to ghost other people and that's really bad for the others trying to reach you. Maybe for those closest to you, they understand what's going on, but for vast majority of people, they might not have a clue. Let people know that your communication to them might be limited because of different circumstances. I've definitely been on both sides of this. I've ghosted people and I've also reached out to people incessantly without a response from them. Either way, it wasn't good for the friendship to maintain that lack of communication. So when you're trying to maintain or keep a lifelong friend, communication is a must. You have to know where you are in your headspace and whether or not you're available to communicate with them or not. Sometimes you just need some space alone. Number two, equal commitment. When you're assessing people if they're lifelong friends or not, make sure they put equal commitment into the relationship. Work has to be done on both sides to keep the friendship going. Because one of the keys to lifelong friends is equal energy into that relationship. Unequal friendships are very, very common and they tend not to last very long, especially not lifelong. And once either one of you realizes the unequal balance, the friendship might deteriorate pretty quickly because the feelings of that person might be hurt and the friendship will be frayed. This is because at our core, people need to have a sense of fairness in a relationship. A friendship is unsustainable for the long term, especially if you feel like you put all the work into that relationship in the first place. And the longer it goes on, the more negative and resentful you'll become. I've personally had this happen to me more than a few times in my life, where I put in more work and energy than the other person did. This was particularly exasperated during the pandemic, where nobody really wanted to be social. 
friends that I wanted to hang out with didn't really bother to put in the energy or even respond to me. Or they would always leave the planning up to me or just not respond when I asked them to plan for something. Ultimately, some of the friendships dissolved because I didn't feel like they were putting in the energy and effort into the relationship. Finding out if you're in an equal or unequal friendship is very hard. It's based on how observant you are. There can be patterns that form throughout your friendship to determine whether or not they put in the same effort as you. Notice a pattern first, but don't jump to conclusions on whether or not a friendship is good or bad. Sometimes people might have things going on in their lives and they can't get to you right away. But once you identify an unequal relationship, it's really up to you on how you want to proceed with this. You can either confront them with this or realize that the friendship has gone through its natural course and end it. That loss of a friendship will always hurt, but know that you'll have more time available for other people. So take a look at the friends in your life and see whether or not you have an unequal or equal friendship. It can be a sign that that friendship may or may not last the test of time. Number three, align goals in life. When you're trying to find and keep lifelong friends, make sure that they have goals aligned with yours. This is an indicator of compatibility and staying power over the long run. Friendships just work smoother if your goals are aligned with each other. And it decreases the possibility of incompatible lifestyles and goals that could cause conflict. For example, if you're friends with a serial dater and you're about to have your first child, those lifestyles can be incompatible. And based on what kind of friendships that you might have with that person, it might be strained because you might not see them all the time. And the conversations between you two might not have a lot of similarities because of your different lifestyles. There is less overall overlap between the two different conversations, so it might be harder for the relationship to last. Certainly, you can have friendships that last the test of time without you guys being aligned on your goals. Because you can have a really strong history with each other or compatibility in communication styles. Just know that your friendships might not be optimized because of the different goals. I have found that most of my friends share the same goals that I do, especially in the short term. It didn't matter if they were younger or older than me. They both have similar goals to what I'm going through right now. I find it easier to share things and converse with them on similar problems and situations in my life. I do have friends that we don't align currently on our goals in life. Those friendships were formed in high school and college, and I find it harder to convey with them on a day-to-day -day basis because there's less things to talk about between the two of us due to our different goals in life. So look for alignment of your long-term goals within your friendships. They can tell whether or not you can have a strong or weak friendship. Number four, communication style. How you and your friend communicates and that frequency of communication is an indicator of whether or not your friendship can last over the long term. Those that match your style of communication, you'll find it much easier to maintain that friendship over the lifetime. This is because each one of us has a unique way of expressing ourselves, and when we align with that communication style, it just goes more smoothly. The way we express ourselves, the pace of our speech, and the frequency at which we communicate are all very important indicators. When we have different styles of communication, it introduces unnecessary friction into our relationships, and that might cause a breakup later down the line. For example, you don't like cursing, but your friend curses all the time. That causes unnecessary friction. Or if you talk fast and the other person talks slow, and you're frustrated by them talking so slowly. Or lastly, you want to communicate every week, but the other person wants to communicate every single day. That's an incompatibility there. Of course, people don't tell you these things. You have to be observant of the communication style. It's really up to you to notice the communication styles, whether they're similar or different than yours. In my experience, I definitely lost many friends over this. I had a different communication style than they did. They wanted me to talk more and I wanted to talk less. And also there are certain times when I'm unavailable due to work and I can't be a good friend during that time. So I really recommend you think about the friends in your life and your communication styles versus theirs. Are they compatible with each other? Is that communication style good for you or would you rather it be changed slightly? Then using that knowledge, reach out to your friend and ask whether or not they're able to change their communication style for you or vice versa, changing your communication style to fit them to make the friendship smoother. So over the lifetime, communication styles are very important to help you maintain a smooth relationship. So if you can, find friends that have the same communication styles as you do. Over the long term, you'll be grateful. And number five, it's okay to let go. Finally, know when it's time to let go of a friend that's not worth your time and energy anymore. This can be friends that naturally fall out of contact with you or just aren't a good fit for you or friends that just have different goals in life and they're no longer compatible with the things that you're doing. It's easy to fall into the expectations of just because you had a friend for a very long time that you need to sustain it forever. As you grow older and you have less time overall because of work or family, you're gonna realize that not all the friends demand your time and effort. 
you're gonna realize that there's a lot of pressure put on you to only spend time with the most important things in your life. And sometimes that might include some friends you've had forever. If certain friends can accept that you no longer can spend the same amount of time with them, then you might be able to keep them because they might also understand that life circumstances change and that you might not have the time available to them. They'll understand because they also have time commitments upon them. But if friends say they cannot accept this new arrangement, then it might be time to let them go. I've had to let a lot of friendships go in my life and it was always hard for me. Even years later, I wonder about my friends and what they're currently doing. I'm curious about them. But I don't regret that choice. I made the right call to let go some of the toxic friends in my life and also friends that didn't accept that I couldn't be there for them always. I don't usually recommend this, but in certain cases where you really just need to let a friend go, ghosting them is probably the easiest and most benign way for the both of you. In this way, it doesn't pull you into a long drawn out argument. You just let the friendship die naturally. You'll still have hurt feelings on both sides, but it's drawn over a longer period of time so that it's not an incident. But the key is to leave a friendship that you think is toxic or incompatible with your current situation. So although it may be hard to do, sometimes a friendship just runs its natural course and it's time to end it. At the end of the day, it's okay to just let go of a friendship that's not working for you. So here are my general thoughts on keeping lifelong friends. I think that over the last couple of years, it has truly tested what it means to be a true friend. During the pandemic, most people retreated to a smaller group of friends, and those are the lifelong friends. I did the same thing. I shrank my friendship circle so that I was only communicating with a close group of friends. Prior to the pandemic, I thought I had a stable group of friends and that I could always rely on them through thick and thin. But that just wasn't the case. As the pandemic grew on, I lost a couple of friends along the way just because I didn't communicate with them frequently enough. And I also lost a few people because I just didn't feel like putting in the energy or work into that relationship anymore. It was an unequal friendship. Although I would have to say that the silver lining to it all is that I deepened my relationship with those that I did stay close to. And I also rediscovered a few people that I haven't talked to in years because of the pandemic. Nowadays, I'm more careful and selective of the people I bring into my friends group. And the people that I do bring in will have the characteristic traits of lifelong friends. So like everything in life, friendships can ebb and flow throughout the journey of your life. You'll never know exactly how it will all turn out in life, but the lessons I've learned have helped me move in a positive direction with respect to my friends. So those are my lessons learned on making lifelong friendships. Keeping friends in my life has always been very important to me, and I've spent a lot of time and energy trying to foster and build my relationships. But as life gets more busy and complicated, I find myself lacking the time necessary to build connections with every person that I call a friend. The best of my friends understands this and will work with me to find gaps in both of our schedules to hang out. And the worst of them can cause you guilt and demand time regardless of your circumstances. Understanding what makes friendships last over a long period of time has helped me to focus in and cultivate people that I really think are worth my time. And those are the people that are worth keeping in my life forever. So I hope you're able to take some of these suggestions and improve the relationships that you have in the friendships in your life. So thank you for watching. Please leave me a comment down below on what are your thoughts on forming lifelong friends and what would you recommend? And I'll see you next time.